His law has been declared unconstitutional, but President Sarkozy is ready to try again. He says denying the Armenian genocide is intolerable and must become a criminal offence. Why is he so determined? And what does it mean for relations with Turkey? This is Inside Story. Hello there, good to have you with us. I'm Shuli Ghosh. France's highest legal authority has blocked a law that would have made it illegal to deny the Armenian genocide at the hands of Ottoman Turks. The Constitutional Council said it went against the freedom of expression. President Nicolas Sarkozy has reacted with fury, promising a new version of the law as soon as possible. In a written statement, his office said, the President of the Republic considers that genocide denial is intolerable and must therefore be punished. Not surprisingly, relations between France and Turkey were soured when the draft was approved by the French Parliament last month. The new legislation would have punished deniers with prison and a fine. But Turkey rejects the term genocide and says the law was a grave error. The Turkish foreign minister welcomed Tuesday's ruling. The French Constitutional Committee's ruling is in compliance with universal human rights and European values that we all favour. In this respect, I would like to congratulate the Constitutional Committee. So let's discuss the motives of the French president and the possible damage to French-Turkish relations. My guests today in Paris, Robert Idabirian, the president of the Armenian Observatory. In Istanbul, Mustafa Akil, a Turkish writer and deputy editor of Turkish Daily News. And in Birmingham in the UK, Pierre Persegler, senior lecturer in modern history at the University of Birmingham. Gentlemen, thanks to all of you for joining the programme. Uh, Pierre, let me start with you. Um, President Sarkozy has been accused of simply wanting to gain votes, Armenian votes, ahead of the uh, elections. Does that ring true to you? I think it does. The, one, the first point I should like to make is that as far as historians are concerned, the, 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 the genocide of, Armeni of Armenians is an indisputable uh, fact. The massacres of Armenians does correspond to a systematic account uh, attack on, on an ethnic group on account of that very ethnic identity. So the reality of the genocide is recognized as the most serious historians. Now the real question is what, uh, what is the politician's business uh, in, this, in, this, in this affair? And I think it is, it is very clear to, to most of us that what we are witnessing here is a political wrangle over uh, uh, a historical event uh, exploited for political reasons, uh, in fact, by uh, all sides. Yeah, it's interesting. When you read the material over um, th this whole issue, you, you wonder, I mean, is denial of Armenian genocide a polarizing issue in, in France? Is it something that lots of people talk about and debate? I mean, why is this issue so important to President Sarkozy? Well, I think it matters to President Sarkozy for electoral reasons, uh, but it also matters, or rather the question of denial of genocides does matter to the French people, generally speaking, of course, because the French people in the French state uh, were complicit in the genocide of the Jews during the Second World War. So these issues uh, uh, do, do evoke our own uh, past, uh, but in this particular case, I, I'm afraid that what we're looking at is, is a politicization of, of an issue which of course, as, as relevance to contemporary French uh, uh, history and politics because of the presence of a significant uh, uh, Armenian uh, minority in, in, in France. Mm. Robert, let me bring you in here. Um, I, I, one can imagine that Armenians are very disappointed at the outcome of this constitutional court ruling. Ah, uh, yes, I think they are, seriously. I have received a lot of phone calls and mail the last uh, the last hours expressing their uh, they are expressing their feelings to me and of course they are very very disappointed by what has happened well i, do, I and, mean what, uh, does know, that mean in that respect does that mean that you don't accept the constitutional court's ruling that not being able to deny a genocide is an infringement of your right to freedom of expression that's the reason why they said that they wanted to block this law well, you know, it's very difficult in a country like ours where democracy prevails, you know, to contest the decision of a, of a constitutional court. You know, it is, it is a supreme body and, you know, s somehow you have to respect the hierarchy of the different, uh, different bodies. 
But, However, but it's also respecting the freedom of, 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 of expression. It's also respecting the principle of freedom of speech. Well, to be frank with you, I think the reason they are giving to, to censor this, uh, this law it seems to me very, very light. If you look at the case of the Holocaust, at the case of the Shoah, nobody has been stopped from writing, what, writing or doing scientific work or talking about what has happened. Uh, why should, it, should that ha happen for the Armenians once this law is applied? But, I don't but see. But why should it I be a criminal it, offense? Again, why should it be a criminal offense to say, well, I don't think it happened? Uh, we can, you can, you can discuss that. I think, uh, you know, I don't really want to go into the details of the, uh, of the law, but, you know, at a given point in time, you know, when people are exaggerating, when they are going too far away from, you know, when the, the discussion and the analysis become a real insult to the, to the uh, monument, to the people, to the exhibitions, to whatever happens around the Armenian uh, memory, that you know once the offense is so insulting that someone has to stop it you know otherwise there is no limit to what could, could happen so of course you can discuss you can discuss this but i think you have to go back to the fundamentals of there is a memory about genocide that memory of the people who have been killed or, or displaced or uh, unrooted from their land, you know, that memory exists. It exists in France, it exists in America, because we are the descendant of a people who have survived that genocide, and that memory, you know, you cannot play with it. You cannot manipulate it for political or other reasons. Mustafa, in Istanbul, what, what do you say to that? Because Turkey was very unhappy about this law being approved by uh, the French Parliament in the first place. Well, first, first I should say some of the things I'm hearing from our French friends here sound very much like the blasphemy laws that some, uh, like, civil just fundamentalists want uh, in order to get rid of insults. So if an opinion about history is, if you define it as an insult, you will have endless numbers of laws that ban freedom of speech and freedom of thought. And while France, unfortunately, is not a country that is famous for respecting individual freedom, which was also seen in the Burqa ban, and I'm, I have a sort to see that the French Parliament, French Assembly, also taking a decision which would ban different thoughts about what happened to Ottoman Armenians. Luckily, the French Constitutional Court stepped in and saved, uh, I think, French ideals of liberty from this democratic but very illiberal decision that the French well, Parliament it, made. It might, well, just be, Turkey, it might just be a delay though, Mustafa, because um, Sarkozy has said that he's, uh, he's going to get a new law drafted. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure, because Mr. Sarkozy is not the greatest fan of Turkey, and while well, Turks are not the greatest fans of Mr. Sarkozy as well, but so it's not just about what happened to the Armenians. I am uh, among the people in Turkey who think that we should be much more empathetic to the ethnic cleansing of Armenians and the great tragedy that Armenian people suffered. So what really happened in history is a very important debate. And I know that in Turkey, we have been blindly in denial about that. And we should face that. And, but that's a thing that will happen through, through, through gradual process. And that's something between the Turkish and Armenian people, not between the Turkish and the French people. As for Mr. Sarkozy, well, er, er, most people, including many French observers, this is, think that this is a political move that he does. And with, with several uh, like uh, objects he has in mind, and one is to block Turkey's entry into the European Union, because if this law had passed, it would be another coffin on the it will be another nail on the coffin of Turkish French relations and maybe Turkey's entry into the European Union. So uh, nobody in Turkey really believes that this was a big idealism lying there. Mm. But people, and I should say that even Turkish Armenians did not support this law. They said, we want freedom of speech in Turkey and France as well on what really happened. And today, you can in Turkey discuss this issue. We had very liberal laws about this until very recently. In Turkey today, you can say 1950 was genocide or not. But France doesn't look as liberal as Turkey to these days. Well, it's cha it has changed thanks to the Constitutional Court. But if Sarkozy uh, gets his way, and if he really brings a new version of this law, it would be impossible to discuss this in France. And it's well, not let, just let, Turks let, who have a, a different opinion. It's not just Turks, yeah. Uh, like historians like Bernard Lewis, 
Günter Levy, there are people who are not Turks, but who have a different opinion on how the tragedy of 1915, which is very real, should be legally named. Yeah, let, let, let's, I mean, that's a, that's a good point to introduce the, the, uh, and talk about the relationship between uh, France and Turkey. Despite the recent controversy of the draft law, France and Turkey have had a number of mutual economic and political interests. Trade between the two countries was valued at around $15 billion in 2010. France is Turkey's fifth biggest export market and the sixth biggest source of its imports. 350 French companies were active in Turkey in 2010 and there are 550,000 registered Turkish citizens living in France. Over a million French tourists visited Turkey last year. France is also home to an estimated 500,000 ethnic Armenians. Uh, Pierre, uh, the, the relationship between France and uh, Turkey, Mustafa there saying that uh, France isn't a particular friend to Turkey, but they have had a, a, a relationship there, a relationship which um, is very tense right now. Well, it is very tense, and, and, and mainly because the way this, this relationship has been managed characteristically, I, I believe, by President Sarkozy is, is simply yet another uh, 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 indication of, of, of the way right-wing populism has, has tainted uh, French foreign policy. I mean, uh, Turkey is, 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 as you rightly said, a very important uh, partner of, of France and of the European Union commercially. Uh, in, in, in strategic terms as well. And, and in fact, if you look at uh, the case for and the, the entry of Turkey into the EU, strategically and economically, and indeed culturally as well, as far as the integration of Islam in, in, in European society is concerned, uh, it is a very strong case indeed, except that, of course, uh, 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 French politicians and many European politicians, and particularly conservative politicians, have been reluctant uh, to, to, to face this, this reality, to, to make the case before an electorate which remains uh, very, uh, very reluctant to, to engage with cultural diversity, not only in Europe, but of course uh, within France itself. And it's a, it is a shame that such an important question, that of Tur the entry of Turkey into Europe, has been uh, hijacked in this, in, in this way. And I think it's, it is a shame for France, it is a shame for, for the EU, and it's a shame as well for uh, Turkish civil society and liberal forces within, uh, within Turkey, including uh, uh, historians, of course, who are trying to uh, do their best to encourage uh, a free, open dialogue about the history of the Ottoman Empire and, and, and the early Turkish Republic, but of course about uh, the role of Turkey in the contemporary world. Do, do you think it might backfire on France? Because, I mean, Turkey is a, a, an important strategic member of uh, NATO, for example. Um, I mean, th this might have repercussions for the, for the whole of the Western region. It is, it is possible. I, I, I have to say that I, I'm, I'm, I, I wouldn't be able to speak confidently about these issues, but, but it is possible that this, this, this uh, populist stance might have an impact on, 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 on wider issues, but it is to be hoped that, uh, that uh, for once, uh, real politic will, will prevail and, and that the common, uh, well-understood uh, uh, mutual interest that, that Turkey and uh, France uh, have uh, will 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 e eventually uh, bring both France and Turkey around the table. Uh, what I would like to, to to emphasize as well is that this the, this question of the Armenian genocide is a very important one uh, that needs to be addressed critically by all parties. Uh, but I don't believe that this is something that that a parliament, that politician, let alone. Uh, the French state uh, can legislate on, uh, mm. and we cannot argue against the Turkish state legislating on this, uh, and and then say that the French state can can do it. I think that there's a, there's a major uh, uh, problem here of of, of coherence. Uh, I, I think it is it is a, it is a real shame. Robert, what do you think about um, what Pierre said? Because uh, it's interesting that. This all sort of raised its head at a time when uh, my understanding is that Turkey is trying to normalize uh, relations with Armenia. It signed an agreement, didn't it, back in 2009 to try and reopen uh, diplomatic relations? Um, I would like to, um, I would like, I know a lot of important things, subjects have been touched during the last two interventions, including the one uh, from uh, Mustafa uh, Akyol when he said that this issue has to be resolved between the Armenians and the Turks. Uh, I agree with that. I agree that the solution of a question of the Armenian genocide and all the historical damage that has been caused to the Armenians, you know, have to be resolved. They have to be resolved, but the key 
of a problem is in the hands of the Turkish state to start with. Okay? Now, we, we, we claim and we say that we are, the Turkish society has to change, will change, will change one day, maybe in 10 years, maybe in 100 years. Uh, I don't think we have to count only on that. I think it's very important, but it's not the only thing. The thing which is important is the Turkish leadership. Today's Turkish leadership, today's political forces have to accept what has happened in 1915. Uh, you know, I think it's stop. It's about time, 100 years later, to continue to deny these these facts. The day but the Robert, prime minister of Turkey, of the president, yes, Turkey will, does I mean, recognize, that, that day, doesn't it? Turkey day, does recognize that there were many, many killings of uh, Armenians in 1915. It just rejects the term genocide. No, well, but I think, I think you really need, you really need to look at this issue as a total issue, as a global issue, okay? Just saying that there was a certain number of killings is not enough. I think they have unrooted a total p people, its culture, its civilization. They have emptied the country of their own citizens from Armenian origin. I think this is a major, major historical event that cannot just be managed by saying, yes, we have about, uh, we make, uh, make excuses, or we have about five, five, uh, 500,000 Armenians killed. No, it's an issue of a major importance which has to be addressed. And I think it takes courage to address it. And I think when you related to it before on the Armenian French, Armenian Turkish protocols, where the, the Armenian government, Mr. President Sarkisian, has gone aboard uh, uh, beyond any limits to be able to sign these protocols. He accepted all kinds of things which we in diaspora have not always agreed to. But he has gone all across the board to make that protocol, to sign those protocols, and yet they have been rejected by the government. They have not been submitted well, let me, to the let Turkish me bring Mustafa Parliament, in on this. and here we are. Mustafa, yes. what, 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 is the, what is the opinion of how the, the, the Turkish government has handled this issue in Turkey? Well, first of all, let me say that the Turkish-Armenian rapprochement, which was very promising, was cut short, not because the Turkish state was not, uh, was not willing to go forward, but because of the problems between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is under Armenian occupation since 1990s, early 1990s. And, that is, and Turkey has a historic um, relationship with Azerbaijan, and that was the main reason, not, not just because the Turkish government was not willing to go forward. But let me come back to what is happening in Turkey about this. Now, this total denial of the Armenian great catastrophe, whatever you would call it, this great human tragedy, was a policy devised by Turkey's generals uh, under the military coup of 1980. They totally created a national narrative which said no, but nothing had happened to the Armenians. It is us who suffered. And there were some Armenian atrocities they, they referred to, but they totally tried, decided to uh, deny and hide the other side. And this went on and on, and this has become a national mantra. But Turkey has been opening up, and in the past years, this issue has been now being debated in Turkey. There are people, there are academics, there are intellectuals who say it was a genocide. There are other people who say, whatever we call it, we have to face this. More and more honest dialogue is beginning. But it doesn't help when a French parliament imposes a law which says you will go into jail if you say it's not genocide, that only enforces more reactionary and nationalist forces in Turkey. Because then people start to think, oh, this is a Western conspiracy on Turkey, which is a widely held belief in Turkey, again, which was promoted by the state. So if, if there's denial in Turkey, yes, the Turkish state is responsible, but things have changed. In 2006, for the first time in Turkish history, we had a open uh, conference on, on this in, in a university and was supported by the government. And there, the thesis of genocide was openly discussed. But uh, so things will, it will help if there is more honest dialogue between Turks and Armenians well, let, that let, will help. Let, Turks let, and me, Armenia. let me introduce. But it wouldn't help if there are impositions. OK, let, let me introduce one other element to, to discuss. The author of the genocide bill, French MP Valérie Boyer, expressed her disappointment on the decision of the Constitutional Council. She said France has acknowledged two genocides, the Holocaust and the Armenian genocide of 1915. The victims of the Holocaust are protected from denial, but the victims of the Armenian genocide are not. Uh, Pierre, d does that mean that the Constitutional Court ruling is contradictory? Uh, you can't deny the, <coughs> the Jewish Holocaust, you can deny the Armenian Holocaust. 
Well, as the major difference here to consider is that the, 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 the French people, at least uh, some French people, but most definitely the French state uh, at the time, uh, was responsible, directly contributed to the genocide of the Jews and, and, and the Holocaust. The fact finally recognized in 1995 by, by the then President Jacques Chirac. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, even though I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, uh, wary uh, when I hear politicians uh, arguing that they can legislate about, about history, I, I think we can see why it would make sense for the French state to officially recognize a genocide uh, to which it contributed. Uh, I mean, very obviously, the Armenian genocide is, is a different issue um, altogether uh, of, of equal uh, historical uh, importance. But why does it go uh, against of, freedom of, of expression of, in one case and, and, and not the other? Well, I believe because that, that, that the state sees a, a, a particular responsibility in, uh, in, in uh, ensuring, in trying to ensure that these events uh, do not uh, reoccur, uh, uh, of course. And, and again, to, uh, again, it's the point I want to emphasize, the direct contribution of, of, of France to, to, to the Holocaust. I mean, we do collectively as, as a nation and a state a responsibility to address our history. Uh, and, and this is certainly uh, proper and legitimate for us to, to do so and for the state authorities to, to get involved in this, uh, in this debate. I'm not entirely sure that this is, uh, the Armenian genocide is an issue for the French states to consider. Uh, quite frankly, I think if we were serious about helping both the Turkish um, uh, people, the Armenian uh, uh, nation and the Armenian diaspora uh, uh, coming to terms and, and, and re coming to a joint understanding of this genocide. I think Nicolas Sarkozy should uh, get in touch with his uh, Turkish and Armenian uh, counterpart and invest in an ambitious program of research and education that would bring together uh, scholars, Armenian, Turkish and uh, of course French and European scholars uh, together to really address this issue and, and, and find a way to help uh, the Turkish nation and the Turkish state uh, to 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 uh, come to terms with the reality of what happened uh, in 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 1915. Okay. I think let this would be th this would be a positive way forward. Let, let me get a response to that from uh, Robert. Robert, this isn't uh, this shouldn't be an issue for the French state. Rather, there should be efforts to bring together uh, the Turkish state and the Armenians. You know, but the subject we are discussing about is a very complex subject. Uh, a lot of people are unaware or are hiding certain certain aspect of it. I think in what I have heard the last uh, five minutes, I think there is a certain number of approxim approximation which, which de demonstrate what I just said. When you say that in Turkey, the, the Armenian genocide has, is, not, is not subject to any leg legal punishment, I like to remember that there is a law called the Law 301, which, which condemn and penalize anybody who talks about the Armenian genocide. And many people and very high level intellectual have gone to jail or have been, have been persecuted because of this law 301. So please don't let me believe, don't let us believe that everything is, everything Quick is clear on this Mustafa, subject Quick last word to Mustafa because I can see Mustafa shaking now, his head second, there, but we are running out of time. Robert, let me just get to last well, word in with I Mustafa. Like, I want to answer, well, to, I want to, answer no. to Thierry as well. Article, okay, no, Article 301 of the Turkish Penal Code, which is, yes, has been notorious, does not say anything about Armenian genocide. It's about insulting the Turkish state, and it was reverted in 2007, and there has been no cases about this on the Armenian genocide since then. That's why we have books and publications which speak clearly about Armenian genocide in Turkey today. So it's not the case. Secondly, there's a huge difference between the been, Jewish Holocaust been, and the Armenian, and the Armenian uh, ethnic been. cleansing. Uh, and and whatever we think about these things, in no free country, denial of anything should not be criminal. In the United States, you can deny the Holocaust as well. That's a truly freedom of speech okay. example. Or Robert, in the United Kingdom as well. I'm sorry to interrupt so you, Mr. I we think are governments running out of time. Robert, have you've got 10 to seconds. History. Robert, 10 seconds. I have been in, I have been in uh, Turkey in January 19, uh, 2007. I have assisted to the, uh, to the funerals of Haram Dink. Haram Dink has been put 
t taken to court many, many times for insulting the Turkish state because he mentioned, he mentioned the genocide. Okay. So please don't tell me this. Uh, and, and, and then, and the then I, I like gentlemen, to come back. Gentlemen, I, as, as you've history. all said, a very, very complex subject, and I know that you're all very passionate about this issue. Um, I'm so sorry that we've run out of time. Let me thank my guests in Paris, Robert Idebirian in Istanbul, Mustafa Akyol, and in Birmingham, Pierre Persegla. And thank you at home for joining us here on Inside Story. If you have any thoughts or any stories that you want us to cover, send us your feedback to InsideStory at aljazeera.net. I'm Shuri Ghosh. Bye-bye for now.